Hello, welcome to Rocky by Chem series. In today's video, we will be discussing the difference between linker and adapter. Please, please, I beg you, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet, kindly do so. Thank you very much. So, in gene cloning, a segment of DNA is ligated with the DNA of the vector to form the recombinant DNA, which replicates into multiple copies when transformed into a host. So, the ends of the DNA that we are going to incorporate into the vector DNA can have a sticky end or can have a blunt end. When we say a DNA has a sticky end, what we are trying to mean is that one of the double strands is longer than the other. In other words, there is an overhang in such a double stranded DNA. So in such cases, the incorporation of such a DNA into a plasmid or the vector becomes much more easy because of the presence of these sticky ends. But for a blunt end, both strands are of the same length. So incorporation of such a DNA into the vector's DNA is going to be difficult because of the fact that both ends are blunt. So ligation of DNA with a blunt end into a vector is very difficult and hence a sticky end has to be generated to make the incorporation much more easy. So to make us being able to generate a sticky end, we use an enzyme class called restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes are just a class of enzymes that are able to cut the DNA in such a way that a sticky end can be generated. So they will recognize some, some sites or let's say some sequences in the DNA called the restriction sites and as they recognize these sites, they cut it to generate a sticky end. But one thing is that we should take very note of this. Not all restriction enzymes actually cut the DNA to generate a sticky end. Some of them, they cut the DNA into equal parts and at the end, a blunt end are also going to be generated. We are not going to generate a sticky end, but a blunt end. So a typical example of such a, um, a restriction enzyme is SMA1. So SMA1 is actually a kind of restriction enzyme that cuts the DNA into two equal parts, thereby generating a blunt end. So for such class of restriction enzymes, they are normally not used. It's not like they are normally, they are not used in gene cloning, but they just they are just used as a defensive mechanism by the bacteria. So for instance, when the bacteria is infected by a virus, the virus will incorporate its DNA into that of the bacteria. That is, it will seal its DNA into that of the bacteria. So with the aid of this class of restriction enzymes like that of SMA1, the bacteria can recognize the DNA of the virus and then cut and then remove it away from its genome. Now, let's consider a typical example of a gene below having a restriction site. So as we can see here, this particular gene here has a restriction site and we call the restriction site echo R1 site. So the restriction site, that is the GGATTC sites here, are called the echo R1 site and then the restriction enzyme called the echo R1 will recognize these sequences and then cut through such sequence to generate a sticky end in the DNA. So this means that we can use echo R1 as, an, as a restriction site, as a restriction enzyme during gene cloning. So now that we have gotten to understand how restriction enzymes help us to generate a sticky end, then let's move on to a linker. A linker is just an artificial double-stranded DNA molecule that has a restriction site located in it. And both ends are blunt too. Both of the ends of the double strands are blunt. So we use linkers when we want to generate a sticky end in the cDNA molecule that we are going to synthesize. And the thing is, for a linker, both ends are blunt. Both ends are blunt, but because it has a restriction site located in it, we can end up generating a sticky end from it. So, 
As I said, it will be very difficult if you want to incorporate the cDNA molecule that we have synthesized using the mRNA template into the plasmid or the vector. But if it has a sticky end, we can just do it with ease. But the probability that the cDNA is going to have a sticky end is minimal. And aside all this, we can't ascertain whether the cDNA molecule already possesses a registration site of which we can cut to generate a sticky end. So, because of this, linkers come into play. We attach a linker so that we can ascertain that now we have a registration site as part of our final cDNA molecule. So, what we use linkers for is that during the synthesis of the cDNA molecule, that is during the first trans synthesis, we attach the linkers to the oligo DT primers. We attach the linkers to the oligo DT primers and as we attach it to it, then at the end of the synthesis, that is at the end of, it, of the second synthesis, the final cDNA molecule is going to have some of its portion being the linker and hence we can ascertain that there is a restriction site located in it and then due to that a restriction enzyme can cut through those restriction sites and then generate a sticky end which can bring about of uh, which can lead to easily incorporation of the cDNA molecule into the plasmid or any other vector but there is a limitation about a linker usage as I said a linker has a restriction site in it which is going to be recognized by the restriction enzyme to cut it and then generate a sticky end but it might be that the actual cDNA molecule also has a restriction site located in it so the restriction enzyme can cut along such restriction sites in the cDNA molecule to generate a sticky end in there and at the end some sequences are going to be lost so to overcome all these problems, we use adapter 2 during the synthesis of cDNA molecule, that is during the construction of the cDNA library. So for adapters, they are somehow like linkers, but the difference is that adapter has one of its end being sticky and one end being blunt. And it also has a registration site located in it. So we attach the blunt end of the adapter molecule to the oligo DT primers. So at the end of every synthesis, there, there, there is going to be an overhang already because of the presence of the adapter molecule. So the final cDNA double strand that we are going to obtain is going to have some portion or let's say it's going to have one end being sticky because at that end it is occupied by the adapter which already has a sticky end. So to summarize everything, linker has two blunt ends and then we use a restriction enzyme to cut it to generate a sticky end to ensure easy incorporation of the cDNA molecule into the plasmid whereas adapter has its own sticky end. So there is no need for us to use a restriction enzyme to cut anything which might have 